Good morning, everyone. And welcome to Zion Fairwater. Um, today is a special day because we're going to be honoring our graduates. So Wahoo graduates will be uh, honoring Ashley, Ashlyn Otto, Brevin Schmuel, and Julia Long. Um, also, I think this is a pretty special day um, because we're going to go back to, well, it's back for me, it's new to you, uh, to communion where I will drop the bread in your hands. Now, there's hand sanitizer up here that I'll be using. Um, and if you come with your hand open, let's not touch, but I'll drop the bread into your hand. And actually, this is the new part for you. It's new bread. It is the most delicious bread you will ever try. It is gluten-free, so everybody um, can partake of the same loaf. It is gluten-free, made in the kitchen by a woman whose beloved husband is, um, cannot handle gluten, so that kitchen is impeccable. Trust the source. Peggy knows what she's doing. We will also then have, um, depending on when you come up for communion, you may get going back to the open little glasses of wine, um, or you may still have the, the covered wine. So uh, that, that's kind of exciting that we're going back. So if anybody's uncomfortable with that, please see myself or a council member, Bonnie, sitting right here, our council president. Um, if there's some issues in how we're distributing communion that you're not comfortable with, we would like to know. A um, Couple of some serious announcements here. I, uh, contacted Marianne Fry, and um, Craig right now is going through chemo, and there is a request for no visits. Prayers, yes, cards, yes, uh, just no visits. He's not feeling the best. And it's my understanding that um, Bruce Lenz passed away last night. So we want to for sure hold Cindy in our prayers, and I have no other information to share with you at this time. Um, so, uh, Jen, do you have, that's a real downer, and I, you, you're a high energy person. Right. Come on, perk us back up again. Good morning, everybody. Uh, just a few quick announcements. Um, today, uh, right after church over at St. Stephen's at uh, 1130, there is a high school uh, mission trip meeting. Real short, little one, um, only be maybe half an hour or 40 minutes. Um, I just have to go through the itinerary. I have that printed off for you now. Um, and also the um, permission slip waiver. I do have to fill out some online forms for our whole group with some of the volunteer organizations we're working with in um, Minneapolis. Um, so I need those forms back as soon as possible because I don't have all of your information. So I need to get that information so I can get those filled out online. Um, so that's at 11.30 at St. Stephen's. Um, also, I have uh, packing slips, permission slips, that kind of stuff for confirmation camp kids. I have them here uh, in the flesh on paper. So if you are a student going to confirmation camp, please make sure to get your forms from me today. Um, and uh, right after service, if it's possible, I know that everybody's got to rush out, including myself, but um, if I could just get the three graduates, uh, like a little quick picture here so we can get that on the website, just the three of them together up here in front of the church, that would be fantastic. And then um, the next week Sunday, right after church here at 1130, is a big Sunday, BYG, beginning youth group. So that is for um, fifth and sixth graders, those that just became fifth graders. So if you were a fourth grader last year, come on out. Uh, at 1130, after church here next Sunday at Zion, um, will be BYG. It'll be 1130 to 1 o'clock, and we're going to have some fun games and do a little get to know each other, because um, it'll be introducing the new uh, big kids. And then right after that is our high school outing for June. Uh, make sure that you wear closed-toed shoes and bring some sunblock and uh, maybe swimming gear underneath. Um, we are, our drive, it says on the calendar, 3 o'clock. We're going to launch from here at Zion at 3 o'clock to our outing. The drive is, a, is about an hour. So um, if we could leave right at 3, that would be great. So maybe even 2.45 would be good so that we can get the whole hike in. Uh, while it's still in the heat of the day. So um, high schoolers, all are welcome uh, at 2.45, I mean 3 o'clock 
2 next 30. Sunday. <laughs> 2 30 would be good but yeah i want to be pulling out here by three so we can get everything done so thanks sounds good thanks jen And now let us bring our hearts and minds into a mode of confession and forgiveness. As you sit here right now trying to put aside the things that, that are rushing through your mind, just feel the weight of your body in the pew. Feel your feet on the floor or if you are in a wheelchair uh, or wherever you may be listening to this right now, and let's put our full attention on confessing our sins to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in great mercy, has given the Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join along in singing to our opening song.
At this time, I'd like our three graduates to come forward, please. Ashlyn, Brevin, and Julia. And if you'll come right up here. On behalf of your church family here at Zion, I would like to congratulate you on your graduation from high school. We wish you the best, and we'll be praying for you and your future endeavors. Remember, we are here for you as part of your family. microphone. Brevin, can you tell us what is next that you know at this point in your life? <laughs> well, I, uh, right now I'm working at Riker Dairy. That's, I can continue my education through there and send me to school for dumping and putting kind of stuff. I've been working there for a year. Just keep doing that. Nice. Julia, how about you? And what do you want to do with that once you get out of? Maybe I'm asking too much. All right. Thank you. We'll be praying for you um, later on in the service, but know our prayers go with you as you go out today. Thank you. Peace be with you. First reading comes from Genesis chapter 3. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, The woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. Our second reading comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 4. It is written, I believed, therefore I have spoken. Since we have that same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak because know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you to himself. All this is for your benefit, so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and monetary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes on not what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. Here ends the reading. Please rise for the gospel. Our gospel reading today is from the gospel of Mark, chapter 3, beginning in verse 20. 
then the crowds came together again so that Jesus and his disciples could not even eat. And when his friends heard it, they went out to seize him, for they said, Jesus is beside himself. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, he's possessed by Beelzebul, and by the prince of demons he casts out demons. And Jesus called them to him. And he said to them in parables, how can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but is coming to an end. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man. Then indeed he may plunder his house. Truly, I say to you, all sins will be forgiven, that the sons of men and whatever blasphemies they utter, but whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin, for they had said, he has an unclean spirit. And his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to Jesus and called him. And a crowd was sitting about him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers are outside asking for you. And Jesus replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking around on those who sat about him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. The old Mother Goose nursery rhyme goes, Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. Now, for those of you who never had the pleasure of hearing Mother Goose stories read to you as a child, Humpty Dumpty was an egg. So a fall was a pretty dangerous thing to happen to him. I've always wondered, whatever happened to Humpty? Did he remain a cracked, oozing, raw egg sliming up the place? Or perhaps there's a lot more to Humpty's life. Author Dan Sintat answers my question in his book, After the Fall. I'd like to share this story with you this morning. After the fall, how Humpty Dumpty got back up again. My name is Humpty Dumpty. This was my favorite spot, high up on the wall. I know, it's an odd place for an egg to be. But I loved being so 